You know, it's it's interesting to me, you know, for also what Melissa is saying, that uh, I haven't looked at these polls in a couple of months, but uh, it seems that African-American voters are more likely than European, than white voters, to think that Obama can't win, and that females, white females, are more likely to think that Clinton can't win. So it, it you know, I, I suspect we're each responding, or those groups are responding, to uh, their individual life experiences, so, you know, which su supports what what she's saying. Though, I mean, I don't want to bring up any mm. polls now, <laughs> uh, because we know how wrong they can be. Right, Though, right. when you look at this new ABC poll in South Carolina, it has shifted dramatically the African-American population mm -hmm. from being, uh, when polled, supposedly— yes, now it seems possible. Well over 60 percent for yeah. Obama. Now, now it seems more possible. So, but in the in the in the absence of evidence, you know, now it's now it's changed. Uh, Sam Husseini um, in Washington D.C. raised an interesting question about pollsters asking the question, um, not who do you think will be president, but who do you want to see president? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. would be a, could be a very different answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, that would be that would be very good. And I do wish we had preferential voting too. I think a lot of Americans do at this moment in time. And you because, mean by that? Well, I mean so that you could vote one, two, and three. You don't just have to bullet vote one person, uh, which contributes to this hierarchical nature and so on. Um, well, there, there was there was a person who put that out as a possibility, and that was Lonnie Guineer, who talked about all the ways in which we would right. have a more fair and democratic system. And the Clintons walked away from her. Mm -hmm. Well, as an appointee, yes, they walked away, and I disagree with that too. You know, I refuse to be <laughs> to. You know, we we have to win this election, and we have to win our humanity, in addition, and along the way. And I, you know, I refuse to be divided on this. You know, it seems to me that when fundamentally, when we have to keep talking and keep honoring each other's opinions and, and move against the forces that Nader just described. Professor Lacewell, uh, that shift we are now seeing in South Carolina, if in fact the polls are correct. Yeah, I mean, it's probably uh, two things. One, um, when the early polling was demonstrating among African Americans that Hillary Clinton was leading Barack Obama, a great deal of that had to do with name recognition. Um, as Barack Obama has become increasingly a household name, a visible candidate, he's moved up on, on everyone's list. Um, the other piece of it is unquestionably sort of, I, I think, two dynamics around race in American politics. One is that as the voters of Iowa and New Hampshire have demonstrated a willingness to vote for a black candidate, it's made African Americans um, more likely to be optimistic about his ability to win and therefore not to be throwing their vote away. There's a lot of anxiety that you don't throw your vote away. You have to back a winner. Now it looks like Barack Obama can be a winner. So you see more strategic voting on the part of African Americans. The other part is that African Americans early on had a great deal of anxiety about Barack because he had almost too much white support. In other words, he was, he was getting so few questions about race that I think it raised some anxieties for African American voters who were sort of asking, well, if, if, if there are all of these people in the media, if there are all of these white voters who are interested in you, does that mean that you're not with us, that you don't share our interests? Because historically, um, people who have been supported by these large um, coalitions have not been for the interests of African Americans. So I think increasingly, actually, as um, sort of the racial attack machine uh, uh, shows up against Obama, I think this, in, in certain ways, is, is supportive of of a black vote who says, oh, I see, actually, they're not completely for you. They're, they'll send out people like Bob Johnson of BET to suggest, um, you know, terrible things about you and to disparage you personally. And when that sort of attack occurs, it, I think it actually support, uh, increases the amount of support among most African Americans. Although the key here is to remember, African Americans, like white women, are not a monolithic voting group. Um, they do not make all decisions together. We don't have a straw vote first and then decide who we're going to support. We're independent individual citizens making choices, uh, and I'm excited that African Americans have a choice like this uh, in this election. Final word, Gloria well, Stein. I just think we have to be able to call each other up. You know, I mean, my friends who are working in the uh, Obama campaign called me up and said, someone, not Hillary Clinton, but someone for Hillary Clinton, an organization, was saying that Obama's, was distorting Obama's uh, record on, on safe and legal abortion. 
Uh, and so, you know, if we can backstage and, you know, so I called up and tried to do my best to eliminate that distortion to make sure it wasn't happening. And I hope that having met on your television show <laughs> now, we can call each other up. And when, you know, I, I can't promise, and, and probably nobody can promise, to control a campaign. But at least if we have a kind of network inside the three campaigns, the three campaigns, we can call each other up when there are distortions, when there are things that are and attacks that seem unfair. Pardon? The third campaign. It's Edwards, right. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, and I think I think that's that's important because there there are all these political consultants doing the opposite. You know that they're trying to push them apart and trying to make them uh, more aggressive. So I, I I really would like to see a, a a kind of third force of all of us who obviously share issues um, inside these three campaigns, who essentially say if you don't cut this out, you know, to the, to the consultants, uh, we'll quit in, in public or do whatever we need to do to try to make it uh, a, a campaign on the issues, more accuracy without false accusations. Well, we're going to leave it there, and I thank you very much. Leave it there for today, but continue this very important discussion. Gloria Steinem has been our guest in studio, uh, well known for her uh, pioneering work uh, in writing, uh, in uh, feminism. Melissa Harris Lacewell, professor at Princeton University, associate professor of politics and African American studies. She just returned from New Hampshire, where she was leading students uh, in looking at the U.S. democratic process. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.